This book is being written especially for my daughter. I hope that she never finds herself in a place in life where she's trapped. There's many different types of prisons. Sometimes we are enslaved by our circumstance. This book is about being trapped financially and the steps that I took and am taking to free myself. If you like the first chapter, which I'm about ready to read, I would be grateful if you would be so kind as to share this video with your friends and your family or anyone else that you think might enjoy my story. Um, and it is a story. It is a work of fiction based on a true story. And, and the reason why it's fiction instead of just a biography is that it's uh, truly a difficult thing to write nonfiction because in the end, if you're writing about life, you're writing about other people's lives and the reality of their lives. And there's something to be said for protecting other people's right to privacy. And so in, the, uh, in my efforts to protect people's right for privacy, um, this book is a work of fiction. And the people within our characters based on real people that I know. So there's that. Part one, Justin loves Jenny. Chapter one, Dust in the Wind. For if we are destroyed, the knowledge is dead. We're nothing more than dust jackets for books. So many pages to a person. Quote by Ray Bradbury, Fahrenheit 451. We're just not working out. You need to see it, Amber. We can't keep doing this. Justin Hayward thought he had good reason to break up with me. He sat me down to explain, wise to the certainty he'd settled on. He served it as if it were a warm milk and I were a kitten, happy to be lapping. He wanted me to agree with what he was offering. He wanted me to think he had my best interests at heart that he was doing me some sort of favor, that it was right to call us quits. You are the only one that refuses to see. We are wrong for each other. I sit across from him in dumb silence. The rage comes quick. I feel it burst from within like a cherry bomb exploded in the middle of me. I'm torn apart all at once. My fists fly like shrapnel. I punch him, like a man punches another man, with a closed fist and another one coming. I swear I see the whites of his eyes roll in shock, but then any satisfaction I glean is only magnified by another blow, which lands cleanly on the square of his jaw. I know he feels me after that. I am sure he is afraid of me. He jumps up from the couch to defend himself as I continue my attack. I slug him again, center body mass. I punch him in his arms. I hit him in his chest. I pound on him like a woman trying to break the door down of a burning house with her children trapped inside. I beat on him like that mama giving chest compressions to limp babies covered in char. They are dead. I am dead. We are dead. And the wrath of our passing roars like a poltergeist being fucked by an exorcism. I know I'm hurting him. I am lucky he hasn't started hurting me. Justin Hayward is a formidable man. It's not like him to allow himself to be abused and I'm doing all I can to maim him. I see him cringe as he tries to scramble away from my blows. I watch his hands forming fists, knowing he could easily lay me out. He must be considering it under the circumstances which are relentless. I'm on him like an angry hornet, stinging with every limb I can hit him with until he tackles me. I've never known a gentler defense. He throws his body over mine as if he's protecting me instead of saving himself. 
His hand is on the back of my hair, but he's not pulling it. His fingers are spread wide around my skull, but he's not crushing it. We fall to the floor, but I never land on it. He absorbs the force of everything, as if he was always meant to be the martyr. You need to stop this right now or I'm calling the police. He threatens me with the only thing that can make things god-awful worse. Cops. Cops would be criminal. They would have no choice but to take me to jail if they didn't shoot me first. Calling them would be a fatal mistake. I pray he's bluffing, but I'm not willing to play poker. I go limp, like a freshly strangled corpse. He rolls off of me to stand. I just lay there without moving, blinking my surrender up at him in Morse code. I'm still. He is springing to life. He grabs his phone as if he means to dial. He holds, holds it out at me like it's a holy cross and I'm a demon. Don't you come near me. His voice is too frantic, considering. I don't bother getting up. I can't muster a reply. It's over. We're over. There's nothing left to fight for. Not a goddamn thing. Justin is not convinced. I am done trying to pulverize him. He retreats from the house, walking backwards, with both hands and a phone out in front of him as a defense. I remain motionless, but I'm inclined to pop him again as another wave of raw torment twists my soul to savage. After all that, he's got some nerve. His footsteps are heavy on the front porch. They sound like leaving sounds, distant, hollow, permanent. I realize I'm never going to see him again, even though I'm sure he will be back. His face becomes my memory's muse. I want to remember what he looks like when he's smiling at me, the way his happy eyes crinkle at the corners, a playful gray-blue warm and soft like a down sweater. I want to be in his arms again, to hear him tell me he's sorry as he kisses my hair, that he didn't mean it, that there's no way he could ever let me go. How could he? It's the questions that make me run after him. I am up and out the door so quick, time can't catch me. Justin hasn't gotten very far with his retreating. He's standing at the edge of the drive, looking bent, looking injured. He's covered in the red of my anger, with welts raised and puffy. His face is gaunt and sick-like, soured with spoil. I've ruined him. There is no smile when he looks back at me. There is horror. There is wickedness. There is hate. Things are just as I feared they would be. The Justin I knew before is already gone. I stand to face my nemesis. I put my hands up, the same way a bank robber surrenders upon capture. I'm not going to hit you again, I promise. Please just come back inside. I step backwards and into the house. As an effort of good faith, he turns to following me, pushing past as if he doesn't trust the space between us. Stay away from me. I mean it, he says as he slides by. His body reminds, remains tight, locked and loaded. Mine is relaxed. Slight like a kite without wind until I can barely keep my soul afloat. It's all too heavy. Even the air, which is pressing down on my lungs as if I should be suffocating instead of breathing. Dishes come next. Justin takes to washing them like we're normal, like we're good. It's eerie, though, the way he's carrying on as if I'm not here anymore. I start to feel like he'd walk right through me if he came near. I'm vanishing in front of him, and he doesn't care to miss me. He will, though, I tell myself as I stand there, watching him ignore me. He's going to miss me something fierce. I decide. I decide he doesn't realize what he had. At the same time, I fear he never will. The clatter of dishes does the talking for us. Pots bang... Glasses clink, plates break, or at least that's what I'm expecting to see as he slams his hands in and out of the water, as if, he, as if he's trying to drown something underneath the suds. He's red up to his elbows, and soapy wet besides. 
I see his mouth moving as if he's talking to someone, but no sound is coming out of there. Still, everything is so loud, he might as well be screaming. The only thing louder than those dishes is the sound of my own voice. I wasn't expecting to speak, but the words are suddenly there, just two of them. They boom like cannons, making the whole house shake. Thank you. Everything stops after that, just for a moment. Justin freezes and then shatters, a beast unleashed to bite. What did you just say? He's sneering, lip curled, teeth bared. I see killing in his eyes, and for the first time I fear retaliation. He's going to choke the life out of me if I'm not careful, so I'm careful. I don't repeat myself, but it doesn't matter. He repeats the words back to me, like they've already stained his brain with insanity. Thank you? Did you just thank me? You crazy bitch. It's not like just it's not like Justin to cuss at me. But then I've never kicked his ass before. I suppose ass kicking is a crazy bitch thing to do, so I don't offend find offense with his slander. I had it coming, and so did he. You needed your ass kick. I kicked. <laughs> I spit at him with my back curled. He is not the only one with killing eyes. Thank you for taking it like a man. I'm grateful he did not injure me, even though I feel mortally wounded. For as little as he cared for me, he was at least an admiral, admirable ending. I'm thankful for that. The rest, though. The rest feels like bitter roots stuck up my nose and a throat full of gravel. My mouth is sucking on dust. There's nothing I can do to change things, and now... I'm choking on words made of splinters. We stand there, then, in the weirdest way. It's as if we're meeting each other for the first time, as strangers, with neither one of us wanting to explore a friendship. It's over, Amber. You need to accept it. I hear him tell me what I need to do. There's a breeze playing with my hair, and a fly on the wall is watching us with an insipid smile. I decide to wait for the dust to settle before allowing the wind to take me. Chapter 2. The Morning After Pill dun -dun -dun. So that is the end of Chapter 1. Um, the end of Chapter 1 and the beginning of everything else. So if you enjoyed this chapter and you want to keep listening, please, please, please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel, Rubber Rooster Media. Um... You can also find me at rubberrooster.com. There um, will be a blog. Is a blog? <laughs> ah, um, so yes, please subscribe to this YouTube channel if you'd like to continue to listen to the story. And I would also be very grateful if you like my writing and you want to support me as an artist. Please send this link um, to your friends via private messenger and say, hey, I want you to hear this story. This is a story of a a woman who uh, <laughs> was trapped by life and she did some extraordinary things to get herself out of it. I hope that this book inspires you. I'm grateful that you're taking the time to listen. And I hope you have <laughs> a most beautiful day. May your day be filled with smiles. The life you live is a choice. This was and is Amber Garibay.